There are, shall we say, some unique dining opportunities at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Discover what they are today at Walt Disney World Adults Only. <laughs> I'm Dan and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. Today we're talking about the different dining options available at Disney's Animal Kingdom, specifically about the table service or sit down restaurants. We'll also be talking about the one fine dining signature restaurant that's also at Animal Kingdom. We will do further videos to look at the quick service options and also at the snacks too. At the end of this video, I'll be giving you my top tips for dining table service at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Before I start though, please tell me in the comments below which is your favourite and least favourite table service restaurant at Animal Kingdom. Please tell me why. As you hopefully know, you can make your table service dining reservations at Walt Disney World 180 days in advance of your trip. If you don't know about making ADRs, you're in luck. We already have a video which tells you how to make your ADRs and why they're required. I'll put a link to that in the description below. There are four different table service restaurants at Animal Kingdom. Of the four, I've eaten in three of them myself, and of the three, I've eaten in two of them on multiple occasions. The fourth one, however, is somewhere that really isn't on my list of places to dine at, so I need to rely on your experiences when we get to that one. I'll start us off with the signature fine dining restaurant, Tiffin's, which is located at Discovery Island. This is a fascinating restaurant, almost like dining inside a museum. Dining here is a true exploration in terms of theming, artifacts and flavours. This restaurant is the number one restaurant for a few of our team members and it's pretty high on my list too. I dined here in October 2019 and I have only good things to say about it. This restaurant celebrates the spirit of discovery and in particular of the Imagineers and experts who designed and built Animal Kingdom. The theme of travel can be seen everywhere that you look. All the photos, drawings, sculptures and souvenirs are all authentic. If you dine here, take some time to explore the free elegant dining rooms. Tiffin serves lunch and dinner and in terms of food, this is not theme park food. Here you will find appetizers such as charred octopus and spiced chickpea falafel. Entrees including a whole fried sustainable fish and a taramine braised short rib plus incredible side dishes of lobster mac and cheese and gobi manchurian. The flavours of this are next level intense. And for dessert, you'll find the renowned The Lion King and also a passion fruit tapioca cream. This restaurant offers a full wine list as well as beers from Mexico, South Africa, Kenya, Thailand, Singapore, Japan, Jamaica and the USA. For me though, this is all about the sophisticated and unique cocktail menu. As you would imagine, this isn't the cheapest restaurant you're going to find at Animal Kingdom. In fact, it's probably the priciest. Appetizers are around $14. Entrees range between $30 and $65. And desserts are priced around $13. Add drinks, tax and gratuity, and this is an expensive meal, but so worthwhile. If you're using Disney Dining Plan, this will cost you two table service credits per person. It would be a miss not to mention the Nomad Lounge at this point. This is the lounge attached to Tiffin's and it's one of the best places in the whole of Walt Disney World to get an adult only beverage. Animal Kingdom is typically the hottest of the theme parks and this cool, relaxing lounge is somewhere that you really must check out. During normal operations, you can also get some of the Tiffin's food in the lounge. Taylor actually talks about the Nomad Lounge being her number one place to get an adult only beverage. I'll link that video in the description below. Moving across to Africa and to Tusker House, during normal operations, this is an African-inspired character buffet. And whilst this is Donald's place, you also get to meet Daisy, Mickey and Goofy too. They are all dressed in their safari outfits and this restaurant has a Harambe market kind of theme. This buffet offers American favourites, along with unique, unusual items that you'll only find here and perhaps maybe at Boma too. 
I have eaten here three times, but I don't love it. On all three of my visits, they were so badly organized. And on one occasion, I waited for 50 minutes past my reservation time before I was seated. For me, the food at Tusker House is good, but it's not as good as the food at Boma. Tusker House served breakfast, lunch, and dinner during normal operations. Breakfast is priced at $42 per person and include a morning frittata, banana bread pudding, beef baboti, and Simba and Nala waffles, as well as all the usual breakfast fare. Lunch and dinner is $55 per person and includes items such as a tabbouleh and hummus dip, spit roasted chicken, curries, peri curry salmon, black eye pea salad, as well as less adventurous options as well. This is a great use of one table service credit per person if you use a Disney dining plan when they're being offered. And if you want to meet these characters, then this is totally worth doing. Next across to Asia and to one of my absolute favorite restaurants in the whole of Walt Disney World, Yak and Yeti. You can almost smell the bias here. Now there is a restaurant called Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe. I am only talking about the sit down restaurant in this video, although the quick service restaurant is awesome as well. At the base of Expedition Everest, you will find Yak and Yeti. It looks like a quiet village house, but inside it's actually a lively bustling restaurant serving a delicious array of Pan-Asian food. It actually combines dishes and flavors from across Asia. This restaurant is decorated with artifacts from across Asia and is a really interesting place to dine. It is operated by Landry's and if you have a Landry's card, there's no need to make a reservation. They will get you a table. Overall though, this is a must visit restaurant for me on every trip. On the menu, you will find small plates priced around $12. These include my absolute favorites, firecracker shrimp and wok fried green beans. Please, please, please try these. These are literally so tasty. Then they have shareables priced around $17. Sushi grade tuna nachos and Korean fried chicken. Entrees here are between $20 and $30 and include things such as lo mein bowls, teriyaki chicken, miso salmon, chicken tikka masala, coconut covered shrimp and wok fried honey chicken. They even do a plant based Beyond Burger here too. And then desserts are priced around $11 and include the mango pie, the skewers of pineapple and cream cheese fried wontons and also a really unique pineapple upside down cake. I beg you to dine here. When offered, the Disney dining plan is accepted here and it will cost you one table service credit per person. Yak and Yeti has a great cocktail assortment, an incredible eclectic selection of beers from Asia and beyond, as well as a gratuitous wine and sake list as well. I absolutely recommend a visit here. And lastly, the one that I haven't dined at and actually have no intention of dining at is the Rainforest Cafe. This is a chain restaurant aimed mostly at families with kids, but I can actually go to the Rainforest Cafe here in London. So it's somewhere that I would never bother with whilst at Walt Disney World. Absolutely no reason why you shouldn't dine here though. Just appreciate this restaurant is likely to attract families with kids, perhaps more than somewhere like Tiffin's. And so if you're on an adult only trip, this may not be the preferred option for you. There are two Rainforest Cafes at Walt Disney World. The other one is at Disney Springs and this one, Animal Kingdom, is right by the park entrance. Even I have to admit that the theme in here looks immense. You're basically on a trek through the Amazon and not a single touch is missing here. You will find a cool rainforest environment, which is the perfect escape from the Florida heat. Animals surround you, as do the sounds of the rainforest. Singing birds, trumpeting elephants, and chest pounding gorillas are the order of the day. There are some really interesting items on the menu here. Appetizer offerings include a shrimp scampi flatbread and beef lava nachos, both priced around $15. For entrees, they literally have everything. Salads, fish, shellfish, burgers, beef, pork, chicken, pasta, they have everything. And prices for entrees range between $20 and $40. Looking at the menu, the dessert selection appears to be kind of limited, but the $18.99 sparkling volcano would be my first choice. Rainforest Cafe is only serving lunch and dinner at the current time, but during normal operations, they do breakfast as well. I would consider going here for breakfast, you know. Looking at the menu, some of the items on there are so unique and they're reasonably priced. During this video, I'm even persuading myself. So there we have it, the four table service restaurants at Animal Kingdom. Please tell me in the comments below, which one stands out to you the most and which one will you be adding to your list for your next trip?
Before we say goodbye, here are my top tips for dining table service at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Number one, if you can't get a reservation at Tiffin's, check out the Nomad Lounge instead. You will get some wonderful food during normal operations, as well as the best selection of drinks anywhere at Animal Kingdom. Number two, make your dining reservations as soon as possible, 180 days in advance if you can. These are not the restaurants that are gonna get booked up straight away, but get your reservations so you're not disappointed. Number three, if you can't get a reservation for Yak and Yeti, sign up for a Landry's card. With this card, you'll be able to walk up to Yak and Yeti and get a table without a reservation. I'll put a link in the description below, but for $25, you can get a Landry's card, which comes loaded with $25 worth of credit. So it actually costs you nothing. Number four, when Tusker House reopens, try and get your breakfast reservation for around 10.45 a.m. The reason for this is that you'll be there for the buffet change, when it changes from breakfast to lunch, and therefore you get to experience both buffets. So you'll get the breakfast food and the lunch food, the best of both worlds. Please let us know what you think of this video below. Was it helpful? And what videos would you like to see us make in the future? Please see my links below for my videos on table service dining at both Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios too. I will be covering Epcot, Disney Springs and all the Walt Disney World Resort hotel restaurants in the future. So please ensure that you're subscribed. For now though, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to know when our videos are released, click the bell as well. Finally, if you're not already a member of our fantastic adult-only Facebook group, please join us today where we will continue this conversation. In the meantime, though, remember, never grow up.